Hi everyone, Mrs. Nowakowski here. Uh, we are starting our new chapter, uh, which is conic sections. And today we're specifically gonna be talking about circles. Um, before you uh, watch this video, I hope you watched the short video um, on YouTube that explains what the four conic sections are. So the four conic sections are circles, ellipses, hyperbolas, and parabolas, and how they're formed. Uh, there is a illustration right here that shows it to you, but the, um, the video on YouTube um, shows it in a little bit more detail. Um, while each shape has unique characteristics, and uh, we're gonna go into all those characteristics and details um, throughout this chapter, Every conic section can be described using this general second degree equation. And um, again, I'm gonna show you what that is um, once we get farther along in this lesson. But before we start, um, there's going to be some topics that pop up a lot throughout this chapter that I just wanna remind you of. Uh, so we're going to be using the distance formula and the midpoint formula a lot, so I provided them here for you. Um, we also have to remember the relationships between perpendicular lines and their slopes. So remember, all perpendicular lines, uh, the slopes are just going to be opposite reciprocals of one another. Uh, something from geometry that you might not remember um, but if you have a line that is tangent to a circle, so tangent means that it intersects that circle at exactly one point, any time you draw a radius to that point of tangency, that radius and that tangent line are going to be perpendicular to one another. Uh, we're going to be solving systems of equations, and we're also going to be completing this square. I'm going to put a star next to this. This comes up a lot throughout this chapter. Um, if you don't remember it, um, it is in your textbook, so you can go back and review. Uh, we'll also review it in this video. All right, so the first conic section we're going to talk about today is circles. Some of this should be a review. Um, but um, just the definition of a circle is a set of all points that are a fixed distance from a given point. Um, that given point is the center, and that fixed distance is always the radius of your circle. So if we are given the center and a point that's on the circle, if we want to find the radius, all you would have to do is find the distance between those two points in order to find the length of the radius. So the if we were to label this, distance is the square root of um, x minus x squared plus y minus y squared. So we're finding the length of the radius will be the square root of 7 minus 3 squared plus 5 minus 2 squared so we end up with 4 squared plus 3 squared which is 16 plus 9 so it's the square root of 25 so the radius here is 5 now that was a very specific example we can um, get more general because it doesn't matter where the center is or what that point is on the circle. If you wanted to find the radius of any circle, all you would have to do is find the distance between those two points. So this would be x minus h squared plus y minus k squared. Now to make this a little bit nicer, I'm going to get rid of the square root and if we so, in order to get the, uh, rid of the square root, we're just going to square both sides. So we'll be left with r squared is equal to x minus h squared plus y minus k squared. This is the equation of any circle. If you notice, 
from that equation, two things are very obvious. Um, H and K will represent the center of that circle, and R will equal the radius. Just remember, in this equation, since it's R squared, you're just going to have to take the square root of that number to figure out what the radius is. Um, if we went back to that first example and I said, what is the equation of this circle? All you would have to do is plug in the center for H and K. So, so we have three comma two for the center. So it's gonna be X minus three squared plus Y minus two squared will equal the radius squared which is 25. So this would be the equation of this circle that's given. What we just found is known as the center radius form of the uh, equation of a circle. The reason it's called that is because the center and the radius are very obvious just by uh, looking at it. There's not a lot of work done to try to find that center and that radius. Uh, but there is another form of the equation of the circle and that is going to resemble that general second degree equation that was given on that front page. So just a reminder, if you don't want to scroll back, we have um, AX squared plus BXY plus CY squared plus DX plus E y plus f is equal to zero. So this general um, second degree equation is something that's common between all four of our conic sections. Um, but depending on the conic section that you are working with, it will, the form um, will change slightly. There will be some terms that are missing so that you can actually tell what conic section you're um, looking at even in this form. The way to get this form is to just foil out the center radius form. So if we went back to this original, um, that first problem, if we were just to foil out this entire equation, so we would get x squared minus 6x plus 9 plus y squared minus 4y plus 4 is equal to 25. And then you would just rewrite this. Uh, the squared term always comes first, then the, uh, the x squared always comes first, then the y squared, and then it's the, um, normally it's the x, y term is after the x squared term, but um, that's not going to, uh, when you're dealing with circles, we won't have that term. So then we're going to have um, negative 6x minus 4y, and then we're going to combine the 9 and the 4 to get 13 and subtract that 25 over to get negative 12. So these are the two different forms, but they still represent the same circle. All right, so now take a second, pause the video, and try this next example. It says find the equation of the circle with the center at 4, negative 6, and a point on the circle is 8, negative 3. I would actually like you to find this in both center radius form and that general second degree equation. So take a minute and try it on your own. All right, so hopefully you took some time to try this example on your own. Um, so the first thing we need to do is find the length of the radius, and in order to do that, you're just going to do the distance formula between the center and the point that's on the circle. We're going to find that the radius is 5. So to find the center radius form, it's just x minus h. So h is the x-coordinate of the center, so it's x minus 4. And then it will be uh, y minus k, which is the y-coordinate of the center. So in our uh, center radius form, that will turn into y plus 6 squared, and, and it's going just to equal 25 because it's always equal to r squared, so since the radius is 5, we're going to square it to get 25. To get your general form, all you're going to do is take your center radius form, foil it all out, and put it in the correct order, so x squared first, y squared, then the x term, y term, and then the constant, and it's going to always equal 0. So in the previous uh, few examples, we 
started with the center radius form and got the general form. Um, but now we're going to work backwards. I'm giving you the general form and I want you to find the center and radius. Now the only way that we can really get the center and radius is if it's in the other form. So somehow we have to transform this general equation into that center radius equation. And the way that you're going to do that is by completing the square. Now if you remember back in Algebra 2, you guys did something similar for parabolas that when they were in your standard form, and that general form where it's all foiled out with an x squared, using completing the square, you were able to work backwards to get that into vertex form. So this is very similar to this. The only difference is we're going to have to complete the square twice in, um, in this problem because we have an x squared term and a y squared term. So to complete the square, remember when you're completing the square, you're actually forming perfect square trinomials. So I'm going to gather all the terms that have an x. I leave a space. And then gather all the terms that have a y. Leave a space. And anything with a constant, we're going to move over to the other side. So going back, and just want to go back to show you something. When you FOIL this out, when you're going from center radius form to general form, you're doing x minus 4 squared. So you're doing x minus 4 times x minus 4, and you're getting a trinomial that is actually known as a perfect square trinomial. When you factor it, the factors are exactly the same. So to work backwards, and create that perfect square trinomial, we are going to take whatever your b value is for your quadratic, so it's the number in front of that x or that y. Um, you're going to take that 6, you're going to divide it by 2 and square it. So when you take 6 divided by 2, you get 3 squared, which is 9, and you're going to add it to that specific trinomial. And then we're going to do the same thing with the y squared plus 4y. We're going to take the 4 divided by 2 and square it. And that's what you're going to add to create this perfect square trinomial. Now, because this is an equation, you have to make sure to keep everything balanced. You can't just add a 9 and a 4 to one side of the equation without adding a 9 and a 4 to the other side. Because then, really, you're only adding 0. Uh, so we are really not changing the value of this equation, we're just changing the appearance. So now we can factor this. So x squared minus 6x plus 9 factors to x minus 3 times x minus 3, or x minus 3 squared, plus y squared plus 4y plus uh, 4 factors to y plus 2 times y plus 2, or y plus 2 squared. And when we simplify the 12 um, plus 9 plus 4, we get 25. And now this was a quick way to get this into center radius form. And once it's in center radius form, it's pretty easy to figure out what the center and what the radius is. So the center in this case would be 3 comma negative 2. And the radius would be 5 because you have to take the square root of 25. The next example is slightly different because we have coefficients in front of that x squared and y squared. Now normally, the way to recognize if we have a circle um, when it's written in this general form is that the coefficients in front of the x squared and the y squared are always the same. So whether they're both 1s, both 2s, both 8s, it doesn't matter. When the coefficients in front of the x squared and y squared are the same, you know that this equation is representing a circle. Now, when we want to complete the square to get this in center radius form, it's actually easier to get the coefficients equal to 1. So the way that I would approach this is just to divide everything 
by 2. Remember, this is an equation. Whatever you do to one term or one side of the equation, you have to do to everything. So when we divide by 2, we get x squared plus y squared minus 2x plus 6y minus 9 is equal to 0. And now we can proceed with completing the square to, figure, uh, to help us figure out what the center and the radius is. So to complete the square, we gather everything that has an x and then everything that has a y. And the constant moves to the other side. When we complete the square, we take the term in front of the x, so that 2 divided by 2 and then square it, so we're adding 1. 6 divided by 2 squared is 9. Make sure to keep it balanced. Honestly, the most common mistake with these problems is people forgetting to balance the equation and add those numbers to the other side. Um, now we have these perfect squared trinomials that we can factor nicely. So x squared minus 2x plus 1 factors to x minus 1 times x minus 1, or just x minus 1 squared. y squared plus 6y plus 9 factors to y plus 3 squared, and it's going to equal 19. So now we have our center radius form. Oops, I forgot the square here. Uh, so we have our center radius form, and to state the center, it's just your h and k, so it's the numbers that come after those x's and y's, so we have 1 and negative 3, the signs are always opposite. The radius, please remember you have to take the square root of that 19 to figure out what that radius is. Um, we like it if you leave it in exact form, please make sure it's simplified, you can't simplify the square root of 19, so we'll just leave it. And the final thing that we're going to do today is um, really just systems of equations here. We're going to find the coordinates of any points of intersection. Um, if you look closely at these graphs, we have x plus y is equal to 23. Uh, that's a linear graph, so that's going to be a graph of a line. And that x squared plus y squared is equal to 289 because we have that x squared and y squared. Um, that means we're dealing with a circle. Um, if you notice, the center is going to be at 0, 0, because there's nothing being added or subtracted after uh, those squared terms. So when you think about a circle and a line intersecting, there's really three scenarios that we can have. One is that the line is, if you remember this term, a secant, um, and that means it intersects the circle twice. Another scenario is that the line is a tangent, so it only intersects that circle once. And the third scenario is that the line doesn't intersect the circle at all. So when we go to solve this, there's going to be ways to tell what scenario we have. If we get two points of intersection, that means we're dealing with a secant. If we only get one point of intersection, we're going to get um, a tangent. And something special will happen if it doesn't intersect. So let's try this uh, first problem. Um, personally, I think substitution is the way to go for these, um, just because we have some terms that are squared and some that are not. So for the first equation, I'm going to isolate y and then substitute it into the other equation. And now we're just going to solve for x. So when we FOIL, we're going to get 529 minus 46x plus x squared is equal to 289. So 2x squared minus 46x plus 240 is equal to 0. So we are going to have to factor. Um, I'm going to divide everything by 2 first, so we get x squared should be a minus, minus 2x plus 120 is equal to 0, and that's going to factor to x minus 15 times x minus 8. So we're getting x is equal to 15 and x is equal to 8. So that means we're going to have two points of intersection. 
one where the x coordinate is 15, one where the x coordinate is 8. To find what those y coordinates are, you're just going to take that x value and plug it back in. I'm actually going to plug it right into this y equals 23 minus x. So when x is 15, when you plug that in, you're going to get y is 8. And when you plug in 8, you're going to get that y is 15. So these are the two points of intersection, which really means that that line of being represented by x plus y is equal to 23 is going to be a secant of this circle. So take a minute and try the next example. All right, so I'm going to start this problem off the same way. Um, I'm going to do substitution, and I'm going to isolate y first. So with the first equation, when I isolate y, I'm going to get 2x minus 7. 